here in terms of uh, the government heading in the right direction. Yes, and, yeah. and before that, uh, Trevor, yes. you started with the question of why this new found support from Kenya Kwanzaa politicians uh, for the candidature of, uh, of Raila Odinga. So two things. So one, of course, I agree with all of my colleagues that there is a political gap that is going to happen. They are excited about that political gap because there will be no formidable opposition to President Ruto unless something drastic happens between now and 2027. They are excited about that opening up. Secondly, of course, it is the statement that you said We've been given marching orders. Those are the types of politicians we have in this country today. When they are told to go east, and more so politicians from Kenya Kwanzaa, when they are told to go east, that is where they go. That is simply why they are in support of the candidature of Raila Odinga, because the boss is in support of that candidature, and the boss is in support of that candidature because of the first <coughs> which is he's excited about the gap that will be created when Raila Odinga can no longer contest the 2027 election if and when he succeeds for that position. My colleague here says that you do not need to be looking to Raila Odinga for opposition always. You have members of parliament, expect opposition to the government of the day from your members of politician, uh, from, your, from your member of parliament. 150 of them, Trevor, did not bother to show up <coughs> to vote for the housing, uh, whatever housing fund bill at the second reading. 150 of them. A significant number of those were from Azimio. That is, that is the caliber of members of parliament that we have from both political divides. So this expectation that we have reasonable members of uh, mem parliament who are interested in the affairs of the public and whatnot is one that is far-fetched. He equally says that People will make their own path. People within the Azimi One Kenya coalition and those without. I would hope that they would come from without because those within do not need to make a new path. We've known their paths. Take the example of uh, Mr. Kalonzo Msioka. He's been in the politics of this country for a very long time. <coughs> what is the path that he has made? The path of watermelon. Someone who cannot keep his word. That is the path. There is nothing significant that will change about how people and how Kenyans view Kalonzo Msioka between now and 2027. What is the path that his party leader, Gideon Moy, has made? He couldn't even win the Baringo senator uh, position. He lost it in the last election. He is known by every other Kenyan as the kid of the former president, as the spoiled kid of the former president who could not win the senator in his home county. That is the path. There is no other path that they're going to make. What path has the Iron Lady made for herself? She's made the path that she could not win her constituency. She could not deliver her constituency in the last election. What more path do we need from those people? What is this new interesting path that they're going to make between now and 2027? I do not see. He says that there's the possibility that there will be those without. I 100% support that idea. Maybe other people without those top brass of Azimio One Kenya coalition could make uh, a name for themselves between now and 2027. It's a tall order to win an election having made a name for yourself in less than three, three and a half years, especially against uh, the current president, William Ruto. On Maliba and the economy and uh, uh, the, his predicted success of 67% come the 2027 election. He says <laughs> that we've stabilized the economy. And during the break, he argues that we've gone back to the same market, which turned us away in, 2027, in 2021, and we've now gotten the funding that we uh, want. And when we ask him, how have you done that? He says three things. So one, he says debt to GDP ratio. I ask him the question, have you increased? Have you lowered? Definitely not lowered because we've incurred more debt, so our debt to GDP ratio has gone up. Is that a good thing? Some countries have very high GDP to debt ratios. Those are countries which can support that. Can our country, has our country shown that it can support that? No. Manufacturing as a percentage of the GDP is going low. Agriculture is suffering. Uh, so a lot of the strong things which support a strong economy, manufacturing, agriculture, and all of those things are not doing that well. So his prediction that the economy is doing well because we've secured $1.5 billion <coughs> at 
almost 10%. It was 9 point something, almost 10%. The government is borrowing at two digits, almost in a foreign market. What do you expect in this country? So he might think that the government of the day, uh, coffers are doing rather well as a result of the 1.5 billion people. But the truth of the matter is that everyday average Kenyans are doing far worse than they did in 2022. The government is taking more and more out of their payrolls. They are going home with uh, way less figures. They are now being forced to pay for a housing uh, fund, which they do not know how they will get these houses, who will get them, how they will raise the deposit, and all of these things. So the average Kenyan is not doing well as far as the economy is concerned. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs>